So good morning, everyone. Did you have a good conference yesterday? Yes. Fantastic. Uh, without taking too much time, I would like to invite uh, John from Freeset, John Sinclair from Freeset. John has been a great inspiration for me. He helps Freeset based in Calcutta. He's going to talk and, uh, about the story of Freeset and how uh, they have taken it was my request actually to him to talk about you know how they have made certain decisions which are hard decisions but more sustainable decisions all right so i welcome john thanks a lot for coming thank you Nari. um many of you might be wondering why someone who's got nothing to do with software development is, is speaking at your conference i'm not totally sure why either but um you were all given a bag when you um, uh, checked in at the conference, when you registered. And some of you may have read, there's a little tag inside of that bag. Um, and it says that the bag was made by Freeset. That's the organisation of the business that, that I work for. Um, and so the bags that you, you have with you were made in Calcutta um, by women who have um, come out of the sex trade or by young women who have been employed so that they won't end up in the sex trade. I um, came to be involved with this business um, about many years ago, um, quite by coincidence really. I heard about what they were doing, I thought it sounded like an interesting story and that I would um, like to make a documentary about it. My background is television. And so I um, came to Calcutta to make a documentary about something that was very interesting and um, came away inspired. It was, it was more than interesting, it was inspiring. And it was life changing. And I went from um, observing this as a documentary maker to uh, wanting to be a participant in what was going on. So that visit was eight years ago. And, um, and now I've quit my job in television and I work for the company. It was through um, this work with Freeset that I was introduced to Naresh about three or four years ago. I had the good fortune to be introduced to Naresh. And he helped us develop our website. I'd just like to say if you visit our website and there's any kooky coding going on, don't blame Naresh, it's probably me breaking it for him. Um, but um, I, I thank Naresh and the, and the organising committee for inviting me here to tell you a little bit more about what Freeset's on about and why I believe that it's an important thing. I'd like to um, begin by telling you a, a few short stories. Priya was married at the age of 14, but unfortunately she wasn't able to have any children, so her husband left her. The tragedy of this is that now she is unable to be married again. She is shamed, she's shamed her family, she herself feels shame and no one else wishes to marry her. Her parents won't take her back because of the shame. What is she to do? She meets a man who, who treats her well, who seems nice, and so she um, spends time with him. Until one day she finds that he sold her into the sex trade. Or Saraswati, from a, a poor rural village north of Calcutta in an area called Mashidabad. Her parents are so desperately poor that they prepared to sell their daughter to a madam for an upfront lump sum and then the prospect of ongoing payments from their daughter from her proceeds of her work in a brothel. This woman, to this day, some 30 years later, still sends money back to her parents. Or Rita. Rita was uh, a child of 13 in the, in the 1970s when the um, Bangladesh War of Independence was raging. She was um, living in a refugee camp on the border with India with her parents. It's, it was a terrible place for a 13 year old to live. It was, it was, the conditions weren't very good. It was, it was no fun at all. And so she was looking, as 13 year olds do, for something, a, a way out. And she was befriended by a woman who was a little older and, um, and they got on really well. And she was... Um, appreciative of the friendship. So one day when this woman said to her, um, 
Why don't we run away to Calcutta and get a job as a housemaid? You know, the, there was a sense of adventure and possibility and getting out of this horrible place that she was. So at the tender age of 13, she made the quite momentous choice to run away from her family and come to India. The problem was that when she got to Calcutta and saw all these, she saw all these big buildings and was, was impressed by this, this whole new place that she'd never seen before, she was from, from a rural area, uh, there was no job as a housemaid. And her friend sold her to a madam. The first time, or well, the time when her, her life changed, was when she was taken to a room, locked inside with a man, given a soft drink, laced with drugs, and raped. She was 13. This one moment, this one moment would change her life irreversibly forever. 35 years later, she still lives in the shadow of that moment. You'd think maybe she would run away and go back to her family. And I'm sure that that crossed her mind. But the thing about madams and pimps is that they control people with fear. She would have been told, you can't go back to your family. The shame will be too great. They won't have you back. You can't go away. They would have threatened her with violence. They would have threatened her, uh, abused her emotionally. And that's how people get trapped. The point of these stories are that once the woman's in the trade, she's trapped. Sometimes quite literally locked up or um, kept in a state of fear through the intimidation. The shame of the life that has been forced on them and their rejection as outcasts by society leaves these women with few if any choices. It's not uncommon to hear these women say, my life is already ruined. I might as well continue working here while I can earn some money. The problem with this is that they don't usually get to hang on to the money. They've got um, people hanging off them. They've often got a babu, a man who lives off the proceeds of their earnings, and he often doesn't work, and he often drinks, and so he will drink away their income. And of course they face huge risks to their health and to their emotional well-being. So that's where Freeset comes in. Oh, that's me, I get scary. Uh, that's where Freeset comes in, um, offering dignity and empowerment through business, restoring women to a place where they can make their own choices in life and experience freedom. And I'd like you to flip me back to the video that I'm going to play here. You know. the reality of starting a business here is not about having a great idea it's about getting to know your community and understanding who's here and this community is about women trapped in the sex trade. And uh, if that's the, the job, the trade they're in now, then what can they do that will actually give them alternatives to selling the books? Our production 
ভালো হলে মাল বাইরে যাবে তবে আমাদের কৃষি আরো বড় হবে তাহলে আমরা মেয়েদের মুক্তি দেব আরো Free said has women based on their desire for freedom from the sex trade regardless of the skills they have. They get in training for their job as well as being made aware of basic health issues. They also taught simple reading, writing and counting skills. So the wala ana maya ko gorib chilo lekha wala korate parini. Pochondo bodi. Ejona porte parini. আমি <laughs> Now she is free from working in the sex trade. She must learn how to be free from the baggage of her past. Debt, disease, addictions and a lack of self-confidence are common problems. They take time to work through. Reset provides a supportive community where this can happen. আমার জন্য প্রথম হচ্ছে নতুন মেয়ে যে কাজ জানে না তাকে কাজ শেখানো যে ভালো সেলাই জানে কিছু মেয়ে সেলাই জানে ভালো কিছু মেয়ে জানে না যে ভালো সেলাই জানে তাই যে জানে না তার ভালো মেয়ে তাকে শেখা দেয় তার মা খুব ভয় লাগছিল ব্যক্তিগত ব্যবসা এখন পাপ তার না If she has small children, they can be cared for at Freeset's in-house nursery. For many, working at Freeset means they can afford small but significant improvements, like electricity for a light and fan. I am going to go to the meter, I am going to go to the meter, I am going to go to the meter, I am going to go to the meter. Freeset works actively to empower women with life skills that they can use both at work and in the wider community. As they gain skills and confidence, they're given added responsibilities. For some, this means a more complicated sign task. For others, it involves a position of leadership, or perhaps learning to use a computer. The women are broadly involved in the life of the business and participate actively in decision making such as the hiring of staff. Being involved in a business that counts, that actually changes lives as opposed to just making money. There's nothing else like it. It's, it's the most amazing thing in the world. I'm not sure what it is. 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 মানে <laughs> Your money is directly contributing to women's freedom. It's not charity, it has dignity, and it puts food in their stomachs. You join them on their journey to freedom. idea of, of what my place of work looks like.
and where these bags that you have with you come from. The business was started 10 years ago um, last year. We celebrated our 10th birthday. So um, we must be doing something right. We've survived 10 years. Um, it was started by a couple from New Zealand, Kerry and Annie Hilton. Um, Kerry's um, CV includes uh, a pig farmer, bus builder, and chocolate salesman. Um, his wife Annie is a physiotherapist by trade. Um, they came to Calcutta because they wanted to work with the poor. They wanted to do something to make the world a better place, to improve the life of the poor. And they figured there were a lot of poor people in Calcutta, which is not an unfair assumption. Now, when they arrived, they um, inadvertently managed to find themselves in an apartment right next to Sonagachi, which is the largest and oldest red light district in Calcutta. Um, when they signed up for the apartment, they had no idea. It wasn't until Kerry went out for a walk on their first night there that he came back to Annie and said, um, Honey, I have something to tell you. Our neighbourhood is a red light district. They had four children at that stage, aged between four and twelve. So it was probably a little bit of a shock. Um, but it didn't take them very long to figure out that these were going to be the poor people that, that they worked with. You see, poverty and prostitution are closely linked. Poverty and its ongoing effects traps people into a vortex that is hard to escape from. Many just don't have the resources and opportunity to move up the ladder. It's an environment, it creates an environment which leaves girls in a vulnerable position whether it be desperate parents who would sell them off and sacrifice them so the rest of the family can eat, or because they're more easily lured away by the prospects of a better life somewhere else. Having established that they were going to work with um, this community in the red light area and the women there, the Hiltons had to ask themselves two distinct questions. They, they knew that they wanted to do something in business because they felt that would be sustainable, but they had to ask two important questions. One, what can they sell? Because if you can't sell your stuff, you haven't got a business. And number two, feasibly, what could the woman make? Now, I guess the second, well, they're both difficult questions to answer. They could do a bit of research into what would sell, but knowing what the woman could make was a bit harder to uh, understand. And um, when they proposed making bags, to be, to be fair, the women themselves weren't convinced they would necessarily be able to learn. Many of them were a bit older and middle-aged, and they said, um, are you serious? You want to learn to sew bags? Um, but they were keen to give it a try. They were prepared to try and learn, but they weren't sure whether they were going to have the chops. So, what is Freesets business? What is it that we, we do? We are a business. We are a registered, for-profit, private, limited company. We're a social business. We're not a charity, we're not an NGO. We're often mistaken for a charity and NGO, but we aren't. We are here to offer freedom through business, making bags and t-shirts. Largely for the export market, although I'm, I'm pleased to say we're making some small inroads into the Indian market. This conference will be one example of that, but we've, we've in recent years managed to sell a little bit more here. We often describe Freeset as an upside-down business. The business exists not to make lots of money for the owner or the people at the top. The business exists for the women on the ground. It exists for the women who sew the bags. We are here to maximise what we can pay these women. We want to be able to, to pay them a livable wage, where they're not just scraping by, just having enough to put food on the table. We want them to be able to have a better life than that. Um, we take our staff from amongst those that no one else will employ. The outcast women of the sex trade are usually relatively uneducated. You can imagine 
if you've been sold into the sex trade at the age of 12, 13, 14, this does not improve your chances of getting a good education. Um, it also means that for some of them, their ability to learn has been impaired, so it's harder to teach them new things. They're emotionally damaged. They're in poor health. Are you, are you seeing why we're saying it's not an easy option? <laughs> we start off with all these things that you wouldn't normally layer on yourself when you're starting a business. But we exist precisely for, uh, for these women so that they do have a choice, so that there is something that they can choose. Like I said in the video, no one will employ them. No one wants to know about them. They're outcasts. And so we want to offer them a choice and say, hey, you, you can choose something else. The other thing that's exciting is that we are no longer the only business in our area that's doing this. There are, there's another business that is offering the same choice. And that excites us greatly. We also employ girls who are at high risk of entering the sex trade. So they may not have been in the trade, but it's likely that their mother is a sex worker. Um, and so we will employ them. One of the, the women who was in the video, um, who, who earned the money to, to get married, she grew up in the area. Her mother was, was in the trade. She often had to go out and play in the, the road outside because her mum had a customer inside. When she started at Freeset, she was, I think, around about 16 and she was still meant to be going to school. And she came and asked for a job and Kerry said to her, no, you, you can't have a job because you need to be going to school. So she said, oh, okay. She said, well, I'll make a deal with you. If you go to school in the mornings when you're meant to, you can come to work in the afternoons. So she came to work in the afternoons and didn't go to school in the mornings. <laughs> But her ability to, to learn was also impaired because even though she was going to school, she couldn't study. She couldn't stay in her room. And when the customers weren't there, she had to go and help her mum with the cooking and the cleaning and doing everything else. So even though she theoretically had access to education there, it wasn't working for her. So she came and worked at Freeset. And as you can see, she loves working there now. And she's a really smart, smart woman. And she's one of our um, emerging leaders. So it's exciting. At the end of the day, we are here to help women embrace freedom. And we have to help facilitate them to be able to embrace that because um, it's not just about economics. It's not just about a job. That's a starting point, but there's a whole lot more to it than here's a paycheck, off you go, you're all in good shape now. Business, sh business should be about... Um, People exchanging their, their time, their talents, their skills and ideas in order to derive an income. This is trade for people. Human trafficking and the sex trade, prostitution, perverts this into the trade of people rather than trade for people. You see, prostitution is a business too. And I guess we see ourselves as being in competition with the local business. The problem with prostitution is that it locks women into a system that denies them many of the things and advantages that we take for granted, such as education. In our community, women have, are now treated as commodities. And um, we don't think that it's right for human beings to be traded like commodities. As I said before, in the beginning of the business, no one was exactly sure whether or not the women could actually make the bags. <laughs> um, when they got started, there were plenty of mistakes. They would sew bags inside out. They'd sew them upside down. They'd sew the handles in the wrong place. Sometimes the bags were almost unrecognisable from what they were meant to be. I'm pleased to say, as you can see, that these days we get it right. Uh, the handles are in the right place. And, and, um, but it's been a long road getting to a point where... Um, that they can do that. When they started, they might have sewn. They had, we started with 20. Ten years ago, there were 20 women. And I think at the beginning, if they sewed 20 bags in a day, they were doing well. As Kerry would say to them, uh, we don't have a business if we only make 20 bags a day. We've got to do better than this. 
I don't expect you to sow more than what you can, but I do expect you to sow to the best that you can. I expect you to work to the best that you can. If you can sow one bag a day, then I want you to try for two. If you can sow five bags a day, I want you to try for six. If you can sow ten bags a day, I want you to try for twelve. If you can sow twenty, I want you to try more. We have to acknowledge that they don't all have the same abilities, but we do want them to do their best. When we got started as well, one of the big challenges was trust. You can imagine that um, a couple of New Zealanders landing in the middle of a red light district in Calcutta, they were a little bit out of place. They were still learning the language, they didn't understand lots of things. And to bring together a group of 20 women who they didn't know <laughs> was quite a challenging task. And they met someone in the community who was able to facilitate this. But it required a lot of trust. They'd been let down by people before. They'd had many NGOs come through, or charities. People with good intentions, who'd come, who'd made promises, who'd taken photos, who'd talked a lot, and then they'd left. And so these women quite rightly asked, why should we trust you? Why should we put our faith in you? Why should we get our hopes up that you are actually going to make a difference in our lives, and that you will stick around? You're foreigners. You can leave whenever you like. We, one of the reasons why FreeSet is a business is precisely because in this context the charity NGO model doesn't really work. There's, there's no... Uh, it's much harder to, to guarantee the ability to stick around. If your funding dries up, if, you, you know, if the people who give you money stop giving money, or someone says, sorry, we're not giving any more, you're done. That's the end of the project. And that leaves the people that you set out to help high and dry, and not necessarily worse off, but possibly, because they've taken steps to change. And you, and you also, of course, have raised expectations which are then dashed, and so they lose hope. So, with that in mind, business seems like a good option. Now, of course, business isn't a magic bullet either. Businesses fail. Global economic crises come. But at least with a business, you have the capacity to adapt. You can change what you're doing a bit. You can adjust your products. You can adjust your margins. You know, you are participating in a dynamic environment. And you have a say in how you play the game. You're not dependent entirely on someone else making an arbitrary decision. And so that makes business a better option. We are constantly developing new products and um, trying to convince people to buy them um, with, with, with reasonable success, thankfully. But essentially, the trade of marketable products is what makes it sustainable and not charity. Now, as I alluded to before, it's very difficult employing women with um, few skills. They come to us with nothing. Um, in fact, they come to us with problems. They don't just come to us as a, an empty um, waiting to be trained. So we have to work hard at um, giving them the training, like we mentioned in the video, get some literacy, uh, we help them with counting, and um, so we have to work hard at all those things. Poor health is a major problem. Many of these women have serious health issues. They have, some of them have HIV, some of them have um, hepatitis, some of them have TB, and these obviously affect their ability to work. So we have to work through that. One of the benefits for the women of working at FreeSet is that they have government health insurance, ESI. It's, you can't underestimate how um, much of a help that is for these people. I had a friend who was in a car accident. He broke his leg seriously. It required an operation which costs 50,000 rupees. Now, that's well over a year's earnings for most of these people, more. 
Covered by insurance, no problem. Not covered by insurance, big problem. And that's how people get into debt and get themselves into much more strife. We seek to keep the women, we don't seek to keep the women, we encourage the women to stay where they are in their community. Because we want to transform the area that we're at, we want them to stay where they are. Because when they come home from work at the end of the day, they're an advertisement that life can change. They say to their peers who are still in the trade, your life can be different. Things can be different. There is hope. Now, for me, the thing that excites me about Freeset is that, exactly that, it's about hope. It's about saying, there is hope for these women, that their lives can change, that something can be different. But more than that, for us as people who are outside of that situation, there is hope that we can make a difference in the world. There's hope that we can do things that meaningfully change other people's lives. So often we hear about all the bad things in life, all the bad things that happen in the world, and it's depressing. And oftentimes people want to tune those out these days, and I understand that because if you can't do anything about it, why know about it? It just makes you feel guilty. Free set is exciting because you can do something about it. You can participate, whether it's buying free set products or telling other people about free set. There are so many different ways that you can participate. That's exciting. And that's, that's why I'm still working at free set. That's why that's what I do. Is free set a perfect solution to the problem? No, of course it's not. Does it trans transform lives for the better? Absolutely yes. Absolutely yes. There's always room for improvement. And nothing is ever perfect. But that doesn't mean that it's not useful, that it's not helpful, and that it's not good. I'd just like to finish reading you something that one of the women said describing preset. Before coming to Freeset, I had a very hard life. I had nobody to take care of me. And I was always answerable to a madam for everything. Now, I am a free person. In my old life, I had no connection with regular people. But now I can freely talk with anyone I want. If I need to ask for something from someone on the road, I now have no hesitation of approaching them. I didn't have courage like that before. I can talk about my life. After coming to Freeset, I've never looked back at my previous life. Changes people's lives. She's found dignity. She's found self-respect. She's finding freedom. And that is why Freeset is in business for freedom. Do we have time for some questions, Nareesh? If you'd like to ask any questions, I've had to skip over lots of stuff. If you've got any questions, feel free to ask. And um, we're talking about when easy is not an option. I'm quite happy for you to have easy questions. <laughs> Someone in the back. Really amazing uh, to listen to your presentation and uh, see the work that you are doing. Uh, I think the problem uh, uh, retirement, do you also do anything for that? Have you planned something? Um, that's a very good question. Um, another benefit that I didn't mention that they have is, is called PF, Provident Fund. So it's kind of like a retirement saving scheme and when they finish work, they get a payout which if they've worked for a long time can add up to quite a lot. Um, we don't have an entirely ideal answer to that. About the best that we can offer is that you employ somebody else in the family so there's little income coming in. And we've, we've, we've had one or two women who've, if you like, retired at the top end. And there's another couple who are getting nearer that time when they're finding difficulty walking up the stairs and, and um, we'll have to investigate what we do about that. But, yeah, at the moment, employing somebody else in the family is about the best way we can help with that. Yep. Uh, 
given that uh, you've been uh, trying to help the women out, uh, you must also have felt some uh, local forces uh, trying to prevent you from doing that, as some of them used to live of them? Yeah. I'll be honest, I've been surprised at how little resistance we've had. It's not like there's been no trouble over the years. Um, we've had some neighbours that like to cause trouble. I mean, we've actually purchased buildings in the area so that we have so that we're, we're less prone to the whole landlord decides they don't like you, kick you out kind of scenario. And with um, 200 staff, 150 women from the trade, we need a lot of space. Um, so we've got a little bit of security in the fact that we, we have our own property. Um, I say some of our neighbours have sent the police around a lot and we've been a little bit harassed. In terms of people from the sex community, um, we actually have a surprisingly good relationship with them. Um, We've had madams actually bring women to us saying, this woman wants to come into the trade, we think it's a terrible idea, can you take her on and employ her? Now who would have thought that would happen? But it's actually happened. Um, so we have a, a mixed, mixed relationship. We only employ, employ 150 women, there's 10,000 10, women in that red light district, give or take. You know, there's more than 20,000 men going through a day. We, we are only making a tiny dent and we tend to end up employing um, some of the older women, so they're kind of past the peak of their earning days. Um, the new girls haven't been in there. We, we don't employ anyone who's really um, at, the, at the prime of their earning. We would desperately love to be able to get some of them to leave and come, but generally we don't. And I think if we started making inroads there, then people would start getting much more upset. But we, so we're kind of on the fringes of what's going to upset people. Mm. Yes, that's a good question too. <laughs> Lots. Um, because our business is very community based in terms of being in the community but also being a community that is free set, one of the wonderful things about being part of free set is how the support systems work and the women support each other. And we've had some terrible tragedies in the last year, some people who've died and things, and, and seeing how everyone rallies around and supports each other has been, has been wonderful. Um, you know, when we started at 20, the community thing was really strong because we were only 20 and, you know, it's easy to know everyone and, and know what's going on. But at 150, 200, people can sort of start to get a little bit more lost. And one of the big challenges for us is finding ways to maintain that sense of community to make sure that someone's looking out for everyone, that there's no one that's being overlooked. Um, and we haven't totally got an answer to that. I guess going forward, we want to set up more businesses rather than necessarily continuing to make a big massive one. Um, it can get a bit unwieldy, but then finding ways I guess of leveraging the presence that we have as Freeset being known as that. So perhaps taking it as more of a brand rather than it being specifically one business. We have dreams of, I mentioned Mashidabad earlier on in my talk, as an area north of Calcutta. About a, a quarter to a third of the women who work at Freeset come from that region, which got us thinking, hmm, what's going on there? There's a lot of women coming from there. Um, it's an area known for families selling their daughters, knowingly into the sex trade. Um, and so what we are trying to do at the moment is um, work towards establishing businesses actually in that region, if you like, going from the bottom of the cliff, which is where Freeset is, to the top of the cliff, and trying to provide some economic opportunities so, so that they don't end up being trafficked in the first place. And, and for us, we can't do that ourselves, so we're actually one of our exciting new... Yeah, and actually we want to set up a training organisation for people who want to set up these businesses and say, hey, we've been doing this for 10 years, we don't know everything, but we've learnt a lot, and we want to help facilitate you to start businesses in this area. Um, we've we've realised that addition is a bit slow, and we want to go for multiplication instead and try to create more businesses. Uh, one of the challenges in starting social businesses is in terms of getting that initial funding. Can you talk a little bit more about how you went about it? Sure. Um, in this particular case, there was an organisation in New Zealand that put up the money. Um, to use a phrase that's very common in New Zealand, we started on the smell of an oily rag, <laughs> which means not much money. I think they started with something like 5,000 New Zealand dollars. So it didn't take a lot of startup capital. Um, they started small, and, and in some ways, one of the, the strengths of starting like that is you, you have to be innovative 
in how you do things. I think it's possible to have too much money, and it makes things too easy, and then you kind of you're not you're not as smart about things as you should be. And so we've grown from there. Look, we've we've been people donate money towards what we're doing. People say, "What can we do to help?" And my first answer is, "You can buy our bags and buy our T-shirts." Um, but people still want to give money. Now, obviously, you can't give money to the to the business, but we have a, a a charitable trust that runs alongside that. And when people have donated money, I sometimes see it as, as kind of like donated capital. It's kind of like shareholders in a business, but they have no expectation of a financial return. Um, their money doesn't get used to pay the woman. The, the business pays for the woman. Um, but it, it also is used for um, helping fund schooling for some of the kids and the families of the women. Um, and we've got a thing called Mukti Budgeting, which is a, a budgeting service to help. This is a, a hugely important thing because so many of the women are in debt and um, owe money to money lenders who are charging them you know, 10% interest per month. Uh, so that's a service which um, sometimes will actually over, take over their loans. So we will pay back the person that they've got the loan from and take the loan on and then we'll help them pay it back to that service at interest free um, so that they can actually get out of debt. Uh, we've even had examples of, of um, money lenders being shamed into forgiving the interest and just taking the principal back. That's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> yep. uh, where can we see and uh, buy these products, if at all we want to? Where can you see them? Mm -hmm. um, you can see, see, see them at freesetglobal.com. Oh, that we saw. I mean, yeah. Um, anywhere else, do you have something put up here so that we can just... I, I don't, apart from the bags that you're carrying, I don't have any with okay. me. Oh, I have. What did I do with it? I bought another bag with me. <laughs> okay. It's one of our new 2012 range. We've just got into cotton canvas. This is a sales pitch. <laughs> cotton canvas. Um, we've got satchel bags. Um, we've got some really cool sort of half round bags for women. Um, they're not on the website yet. We need, <coughs> we need to update the website. Um, <laughs> they're actually sitting down. Um, yeah, so the, um, the new catalogue will be available shortly. But um, we have our products on the website. If you want to buy them, you can inquire. We don't currently have an easy way of buying within India. But I must say, since I've been talking to people here, I'm thinking we should probably look seriously at some uh, capabilities for local sales. E-commerce, yeah. And also, I mean, look, 80% of our business is custom bags it's doing. It's doing these things. So if you want bags for your business, come and see me later. <laughs> Time to hand over. Thank you, John. That was awesome. I think he deserves a standing ovation, please.